Hello and welcome to the module on ensuring fairness and reducing variance and bias in machine learning modules. Imagine a machine learning model has been deployed to screen the resumes or to decide who is eligible for loan from the piles of loan applications. This model should select the candidates purely based on the eligibility, not based on age, gender, race, country of origin, or even not based on the skin colors. That means the prediction should be fair and without any bias. In this session, we will cover what are the factors we should review if our model is performing poorly or predicting outputs that are not unbiased. We'll look at real life examples of where AI can go wrong and how can we fix it. Let's get started and make a positive impact with AI. In machine learning, model fit refers to how well a model captures the underlying pattern in the data. In case our AI model is demonstrating poor performance, we need to look at the model fitment. There are three key concepts like overfitting, underfitting, and achieving a balanced model. Overfitting occurs when a model learns the training data too well, capturing noise and outliers, and this result an excellent performance on training data. However, when it comes to unseen or new data, the model provides poor generalized performance. If we take an example, imagine a student who memorizes answer to all the practice tests but struggles with new questions on the actual exam. Similarly, an overfitted model performs well on the training data, but it fails on new data. If you see this graph, all the data points that are exactly fitting on the training site, that means it's an example of overfitting. On the other hand, underfitting happens when a model is too simple to capture the underlying patterns in the data. It performs poorly on both training and new data. An example could be, think of a student who only go through the textbook and misses the key concept. He or she doesn't understand the actual concept of the topic. And that will lead to poor performance on both practice test as well as during an actual exam. An underfitted model fails to capture important pattern in the data and it may happen due to problem in the training data or the selected features we have used for the model training. This is an example of underfitting. This dotted line represents the model performance, whereas the data points, the model performance is not at all following the data pattern here. And now to bridge this gap, we should come up with a model that should provide a balanced performance. A balanced model strikes the right balance between complexity and simplicity. The model can capture underlying patterns without overfitting or underfitting. To explain with an example, let's assume a student who understands the concept as well as goes through all the textbook and he or she can apply the knowledge to both practice test and new questions. A balanced model generalizes well to new data. And if you see this diagram, the dotted line is model performance and it is not exactly following all the data points in the trading data. However, it is creating a balance and it's not going through the state line what we saw in the previous diagram. Bias in machine learning algorithm refers to systemic errors that lead to unfair outcomes. In terms of types of bias, we can see three types of bias, selection bias, measurement bias, and algorithmic bias. Selection bias occurs when the sample data set used to train a model is not representative of the population it's meant to be. This can lead to skewed result and poor generalization. 
Let's try to understand using a medical research example. If a clinical trial for a new drug only includes young and healthy participant, then the result may not be applicable to older or those with pre-existing conditions. The model trained on this bias sample may not accurately predict the drug's effectiveness for the broader population. Next, measurement bias. Measurement bias arises when the data collected is inaccurate or inconsistent, which leads to error in the model's predictions. Let's understand with the example of an educational system. Let's assume a school uses different grading standards for different classes and the data collected on the student performance will be inconsistent because they have a different grading standard. Now, if a model is predicting student success based on these grades, it will be biased as the grades do not accurately reflect the student's ability across the classes. Next, Algorithmic bias. Algorithmic bias occurs when the design or training process of the model introduces bias and it is often due to bias training data or flawed algorithm. Let's assume that we have an AI based hiring system. The model is trained with the data that includes more successful candidates from a particular gender or ethnicity. If we train the model Using that data, the algorithm might unfairly favor similar candidates in the future, which is going to create a perpetuating existing bias. To mitigate selection bias, we need to ensure our training data is inclusive and represent the entire population. When it comes to measurement bias, we need to make sure we collect accurate and consistent data. And for algorithmic bias, and to avoid algorithmic bias, we need to design and train the model to avoid perpetuating existing bias. To avoid model bias and ensure fairness, we need diverse training data. That means we have to make sure our training data is inclusive and it represents all the groups. We can also use bias detection tool like Amazon SageMaker Clarify to detect and mitigate the bias. We have an entire module on Amazon SageMaker where we are going to discuss and use Amazon SageMaker Clarify. We can also conduct regular audits of our models to check for fairness. And then we can also perform feature engineering and we can increase the number of features. Next, we'll review model variance. Variance is model sensitivity to small changes in the training data. Let's understand using an example. Let's assume we have a ML model used for predicting house prices. The model performs well with the initial test data set, producing accurate predictions. However, when you introduce a new test data set, the model's performance declines, showing drifts. This indicates that the model's prediction were too closely tied to the original dataset, making it sensitive to new or unfamiliar data. This variance in the model's behavior reflects its performance difference. When a model shows high variance, it captures noise or outliers in the test dataset, resulting in prediction that are tightly coupled to the dataset but perform poorly on new or unseen data. This phenomenon is known as overfitting. We already reviewed in previous slide. On the other hand, when a model shows low variance and shows stable performance across datasets, it may not achieve high accuracy on the test dataset, but remains more stable on new data. This balanced performance is generally what we aim for and we call as balanced model. To reduce high variance, we can increase the training data set size. More diversified data will help the model to learn the intrinsic data patterns and correlations. We can also perform cross validation. That means we can use techniques like 
K fold cross validation to ensure that the model perform well on different subset of the data. We can also perform feature engineering and we can simplify the model. We can use a less complex model for our prediction. We reviewed bias and variances. Now we need to make a balance between bias and variances. When our model shows high bias and low variance, that means model does not capture the underlying data trend or the model is too simple and this is nothing but underfitting. On the other hand, if you have a very low bias but high variance, then it fits the training data very closely and the model capture noise and outlier in the training data. That is why it is fitting properly with the training data set. If we present new data set, the model will start drifting and this is called overfitting. There is a third case. If the model shows low bias and low variance, then it captures the underlying data trends and the model will perform well in test data and the new data set. In that case, model is perfectly balanced and this is the desirable performance we all want. Let's understand the trade-offs between bias and variance using Bull's eye diagram. We'll try to plot bias and variance in this slide and we have low variance, high variance, low bias, high bias and we are going to review the model's performance when we combine these behaviors. We reviewed that if our model is low bias and low variance, that is the desired state, the center, that is the bull's eye, is the model's result and we want to perfectly predict all the values correctly. As we move away from the bull's eye, that means our model start to make more and more wrong prediction. When a model with low bias but high variance predict points and that will around the center generally but pretty far from each other and that is what it's overfitting. A model with high bias and low variance is pretty far away from the bullseye but since the variance is low, the predicted points will be closer to each other and we saw this is underfitting. The last case, if the model shows high bias and high variance, all the prediction point will be far away from bullseye and also they will be far from each other, which is called total error and we won't be able to use this type of models. Our desired model should provide low bias and low variance where all the data point should be closer to the bullseye. That wraps up this module. I hope this session helped you gain a deeper understanding and brought you one step closer to your learning goals. Thank you very much for watching and learning with us at Cloud Expert Solution. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more update and feel free to drop any question or feedback in the comments. We would love to hear from you. See you in the next module.